What do you think, Ms. Smith? That block work? So your patient starts mumbling, says feeling say tingling it? around the mouth, and is having ringing in the ears. Okay. Says they have a funny feeling all over. They're trying to get back. All right, Ms. Smith, hold tight. Hey, Emily, we'll be around the whole time. Get anesthesia. Are you having any pain anywhere? So good, look how cute Rosa. Okay, hey. so your resident's here. Ms. Smith just got a block. She's a dialysis patient. She was a little anxious. We gave her 2%. Block was done without symptoms, without any complications. Now she's mumbling. Can't really understand the words she's saying. She did say she was tingling around her lips. Her pulse ox is not tracking well at all. Yeah, this is likely blood, cardiotoxicity, blood secondary to the low So let's start the emotion. Okay. How much do you want to start? Does somebody give me another pulse ox? Mm-hmm. All right, how do, I, how do I run that? Specific book. I like the same yep. emotion. Right. <coughs> They should be coming in a second. I'm going to Will somebody get the pack you attending, please? Like, really good with them? Yeah. You're going to pack them? Or call them? Okay. All right, so you're not, not, you're not getting your pulse ox. Your patient mm -hmm. has become unresponsive. Miss Smith, Miss Smith. Do you so let's have start a, asking. Do you have a, um, so you do not have a pulse. Can we get uh, oxygen mask and start biting? Okay. So let's Can, do we call you to initiate. Okay. 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 The oxygen all the way up. Yep. Let's get the airway box and prepare to so we'll start chest compression. She does not have pulse ox. We need to initiate chest compressions. Here's a. Uh, Somebody get three. the board. We'll put the board behind her back. All right. Is somebody keeping time? Seven. All right. Uh, Emily, I have the time. Uh, I'm sorry. Can't interlipid. I don't have the time. So the interlipid needs to be infusing. Okay. So we're going to put it on a pressure bag. And I'm putting draw up and up from. Are we hooking up an interlipid on a pressure bag? Interlipid started. On a pressure bag, 20, 30. But your monitor is up there. Continuing test compression. Okay, you're trying to turn it. You're turning. Okay. Do we have the emulsion running? To let the full uh, 100 feet bag flow in. Sorry, let me tell you. As fast as you can and then start another one on the 30. I'm going to need a switch next round. Okay. Let's do a pulse check after this next round. Okay. 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 Take a pulse check. Uh, we'll do it right here. Can I get the stool on this side? Is the epinephrine in? How much epinephrine do you want to do? Is that better? Yeah. One milligram of epinephrine. I lowered the bed, it's good. Okay, please. Okay. Hey, when was the last pulse check? It was at 10.01. Oh, okay. Continue chest compression. When was the FDM? 10.01. Okay, prepare to give it in another uh, two minutes. Intralipids are still flowing in on the pressure bag. We have a pulse. I'm not feeling a pulse. No pulse. Continue chest compression. Also, Let's what give another different? dose of that as well. Mm -hmm. One milligram, I think. All right, let's do right, a pulse check. Pulse I have a pulse here. You have a pulse? Yeah, I have okay. a pulse. All right, let's bring a ventilator down here. Mm -hmm. Ventilator's here. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to draw the rainbow. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so today right, is Monday. Monday, but she probably didn't have it done today. Friday. So she probably got Friday was her last dialysis. And the gas here. I still have good air. Okay, so our doctor yeah, says back to 100. She's setting 100 percent. Blood pressure is good. Going up to the ICU now. Uh -huh. Okay. Code and So I think uh, all of you did a great job with the code. Um, it was um, it was really a good one. Everybody had uh, their. Uh,
kind of knew what they are doing and uh, it really did a great job identifying that it could be a local anesthetic toxicity. Um, what do you guys think about it? About the code, how did it go? Um, how about you, Larry? Yeah. And this is good. I don't, yeah. I don't know about this. And people need to know that we do have this bag for right. everything to go for a little cheat sheet. And mm -hmm. luckily, y'all had a 65 kilogram person, which 70. That puts us right around the same. But no matter what, you're going to get the pressure bag going uh, of the first bag just to shoot in as fast as you can anyway. So making sure there's a good idea. Mm -hmm. So I guess I didn't feel any more comp super confident in the first dose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, since we have this. Does more comp, like you know, right? Right. I feel like when I was trying to start it, nobody gave me a real clear answer on how much to go. Right. Well, if it, yeah, because this will say if it's a 70 kilogram, mm -hmm. which is your average patient, yeah. if they're obese or something, you're going to add a mm -hmm. little But you know, you're going to start a bag fast and then you can stop it or add more to it. You know, so if you just get that bag going 200, 250 over 15 to 20 minutes. So the management of code after local anesthetic toxicity is different from a regular code. There are a few differences, like the dose of uh, epinephrine. Usually we give one milligram every two to three minutes, and after local anesthetic toxicity, if there is a code, then the dose is less than one mics per kilo. So, so you would give a reduced dose of epi if you are suspecting a local anesthetic toxicity. Uh, pharmacologic treatment of last is different from other cardiac arrest scenarios. We talked about reducing the dose of epinephrine and then we need to avoid the vasopressins or calcium channel blockers or beta blockers or other local anesthetics. Don't do more local anesthetic. And if you are in the middle of the block and the patient starts complaining of any complications from the uh, from the local anesthetic like uh, numbness or tingling or, or ringing around the, ringing in the ears or uh, tingling around the mouth, then you would stop injecting for the local anesthetic and, and also have the extra guidelines on the sheet which gives you the exact dose of how much you need. Uh, get that, get the call for the last rescue kit and alert the nearest cardiopulmonary bypass team if resuscitation may be prolonged. Uh, airway management, ventilate with 100% oxygen and if needed, go forward with the advanced airway which Ryan did he intubated the patient. Um, if the patient is having seizures, then you can give benzodiazepines, but avoid giving propofol because it can, again, lower your blood pressure. Um, if there is hypotension and bradycardia or pulse less, then you would just call the code and start doing the CPR. Now, this is the lipid emulsion, 20%. So if the patient is greater than 70 kilos, then you can bolus 100 ml of lipid emulsion rapidly over two to three minutes. And as Laurie was talking about, you just get a pressure bag and you give the lipid emulsion. And then you run the infusion of 200 to 250 ml over 15 to 20 minutes. The dosing are a little bit different if the patient is less than 70 kilos, and its bolus is 1.5 ml per kilo. So the dosing is a little bit different from other drugs. Usually we give milligrams per kilo, but this is ml per kilo. So are they, oh, I understand was you start that once the rapid bolus is gone, right? Mm -hmm. Just making sure that it's not at the same time. So you get the bolus and then you start the lipid emulsion at infusion at 0.25 ml per kilo per minute of vital body weight. If patient is still unstable, then you can repeat the rebolus once or twice and double the infusion rate with the maximum dose limit is 12 ml per kilo. So, so we touched base with the knowledge part of the management of local cell toxicity. But let's talk about non-technical skills and uh, like running the code kind of scenario. So you Mallory and Brooke, you were the, and you were the first responders. So what did you notice initially? Like what triggered that, okay, you need to call for help? Well, when her pulse ox wasn't reading, okay. we tried a new one, and then somebody alerted me that she wasn't breathing, and I looked and saw that she wasn't breathing. What do you think so, about the response? Was it timely manner, or was there a delay? Yeah, so I think we got, I mean, I didn't know to really open the AMI bag, but I think that, like, I got the AMI bag right there, okay. and we were bagging, and fine. And right, there was a delay in and respiratory pain. Yeah, respiratory pain oh. quickly. Emily was away right. getting pain. Someone was grabbing the code cart, and it was only Brooke and Nicholas, and they started bagging. Because I said, patient's unresponsive, check mm -hmm. for a pulse. They kind of check for a pulse, so they might not have heard no pulse at that point. So that while they were getting all that stuff in bag, and I said, patient doesn't have a pulse, and then they started compressions. So who was running um, the court? 
That's when I walked up. I said, who's running the code? And I said, do they have a good ID and stuff like that? Because I'm trying to imagine. I don't know because, A, they're a fake person without IDs. And I'm having to imagine. Yeah. Is well, it to not, ask? Because yeah. you always want to ask who's running the code. That's, that's always a uh, challenge that like, uh, we have to see. A scenario. That you yeah. A sign draw. You're missing that. So, right. yeah, somebody has to be running and somebody's recording and someone's in charge of the meds and someone's in charge of respiratory, which seemed like everybody had a role. Mm -hmm. How did you feel in terms of respiratory management? Anything could be done better? I mean, anesthesia was there, so generally I'm just assisting him, so I got the role, you know, out and got in his airway and all that, so he intubated, but, um... Who intubated the patient? I did. What kept you with the team? Well, I mean, we were <laughs> code runner, I was, code runner, so I was masking the, I was masking the patient, you know, they okay. weren't breathing, then, you know, came, they didn't have a pulse, so we initiated compressions. Um, I didn't feel comfortable letting go of the airway at that, yeah. at that point. It wasn't. Um, <laughs> because you were the only, I think, uh, I should, I should have, I could have uh, let some somebody else take over the airway. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. And I think Another I thing I would say is someone asked for the step oh, stool and nobody went and located it and got it. So but I lowered the bed. lowered the bed instead, so he intubated on his knees. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's true. Another thing is uh, they said, let's put in an A-line. That stuff's not in the code cart. So maybe having a tackle box on top of the code cart with everything for an A-line except for the fluids because the fluids are in the code cart. Because um, it's hard to, in that moment, run into the room so to gather a, all the supplies. But there's pressure bags in the code cart, right? There's pressure bags. There's no, no pressure needle, tubing. There's no, yeah. Oh, the setup for the A-line. Right. And there's that's, that's in our... There's a transducer. There's, yeah. That's in our um, clean supply room. Should be. So maybe so a suggestion. That's what has happened in the past whenever there is a code in the pack, you, you have to run to the OR to grab some stuff. And so then my then suggestion would be have a kit, like a small tackle box or something sitting on the co-cart with the A-line set up. And something that we did have, but it's in a very real scenario we would not have is a pump. We yes. don't always have IV pumps in the pack you. It was there today probably because somebody did bring it in there for the scenario, but it is true. Like I think even well, when I came in this morning, the when I came into work this morning and I was a nine o'clock person, I went I had to put a table back there and there were no IV pumps. So if we needed one, sometimes we keep a like a secret one in one of the cabinets. Yeah. I wonder if we put one on the code cart and have it part of the code cart checklist there. IV pumps. So what are some of our take home points from this scenario? I didn't know this was a thing, so I'm taking this home. This was good for me. Okay. <laughs> I mean, truthfully. Yeah. 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 And because we do so many blocks yeah. in thank you area, pre or mm -hmm. post op so it can happen. Yeah. Like, so you're probably going to need one of these bags for y'all because this is can potentially be locked up in our anesthesia car. Yeah, when you guys go home. Yeah, they're not going to have it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I and mean, we, and we, do, we are doing some blocks. We later at night, home. right. So and we need a second kit like this. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any take home points? I think uh, certainly the dosing. Uh, Understanding that the the dosing of epinephrine in particular, yeah. um, you know, the, <clears throat> being making a little extra effort to delegate some of the responsibilities, um, certainly. But that, that's I mean, just you know, I like it when someone's clearly running the code. I think you did a, a, a fairly you know good job. I mean, I could have you know bag mask for him while he was running the code. Um, so. You know, we all have our roles here and you know I, I can definitely you know do that so you can do something more important than Pulse checks for yeah pulse every check. two and they would do an epi every three. When they were doing pulse check? When? When were when, they doing when pulse checks? Doing you said pulse every two. Check. Right. Every two minutes or? Uh huh. Yeah. They checked it at. They called the code at 9:59. 10 and one. There was no pulse. Other pulse check at 10:03. And then. Uh,